miracles. A lot of you in the room will take a reference to what miracles look like for you. And this month, we're going to look at what Jesus did in miracles. I believe Pastor Adam said this. He said that Jesus actually did. But he said last week, he challenged us to not just look at them overall and look at them uh, in their beauty of healing and deliverances and all these type of things. But he said, I want to actually look at where Jesus had to work the miracle. Everyone say work. You all said that really enthusiastically. Everyone say work. (laughs) Yes, the word work. And what is very interesting about the ones that Pastor Adam brought last week, he pointed out that every single one of the miracles that he mentioned, which were 12 miracles last week, Jesus worked the miracle. Sometimes we're just expecting to sit there in our houses or in church and do this. Everyone close your eyes, put your hands up and receive a miracle that's just going to drop from the sky. (laughs) There's this expectation sometimes that miracles are just something that fall out of the sky or happen directly, but it was very, very challenging to look at, hey, how did Jesus work a miracle? And you know what? That word work sometimes, like, you know, we're like, oh, we're here on Sunday. It's not a work day, Hope. Why are we talking about work? But can I tell you that there's actually a partnership that you and I have that we can see miracles happen in this house. And so this morning, my challenge to you is, are we prepared to work a miracle. And when that topic was brought last week, I was praying about what to do this week. And I was like, I have so many healing miracles to choose from. There's so many. Jesus, he literally healed so many people, blind eyes, you know, people who, he raised dead people. He did so many miracles, but this was the one that God really brought me to because I got to see the working of a miracle, the actual working of it. So, Everyone who has their Bibles, which is everyone in this house, digitally or paper, please turn with me this morning to Mark 2, 1 to 12. It's very interesting to understand this, that out of all the Gospels, Mark actually recorded more miracles than any other one. And I was wondering, I was thinking to myself, I wonder why Mark had a particular interest in the miracles of God. And I just I was pondering on that this week, but it might have just been his personality or his experience or maybe even his personal miracle of being saved by Jesus that he had an interest in this. So Mark brought the most amount of miracles, just fun fact for this morning. You all know I like to bring those little facts. Well, let's read this passage together. And if you are, if you heard me preach before, you know that I love to imagine myself in this passage. So let's almost take ourselves to this place this morning and picture what Jesus was doing. Well, it says this, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room. Does that sound like some people's houses sometimes around here? Yeah. I've been to some of your places. I know what it's like around here. (laughs) It's a good thing. Even it says outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above of his head. Then they began to lower the man on his mat down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand, pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority 
on earth to uh, on earth and I've lost my place on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, "Stand up. Pick up your mat and go home." And the man jumped and grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and they praised God. Examining, uh, uh, sorry, praise God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Well, this morning, I'm going to take this verse and I would love you to journey with me through this verse together and look at the miracle healing works of Jesus. I called my sermon this morning a different title. I called it, An Appointment Has Become Available. Everyone say that. An appointment has become available. An appointment has become available. The reason I titled this this morning is a lot of time in our modern context, we believe that healing or the process of healing comes through the doctors. And I don't know about you, but have you ever been sick and tried to ring your local GP or a medical provider and all you hear is, sorry, sorry, we have no appointments available. And in that moment, when you're coughing your guts up or you're in a high temperature or feeling unwell, that's the last thing you want to hear, isn't it? Sorry, got no appointments available. Maybe I can see you next week. But this morning, I want to tell you this morning, an appointment has become available for you today. The last thing you want to hear when you're unwell is there's no appointments available. And see, the thing is, we can't just go to the chemist with our (laughs) self-diagnosed prediction of what's wrong with us and say, excuse me, I would like a prescription of antibiotics for the next seven days for this, please. Or can I please have this because this is what I have. We can't go and just ask the chemist directly for a medication because why? There are steps and processes that take place between you seeing a doctor and you being given your prescription or what they think is going to help you. And I thought about this morning, I'm a very visual learner and I hope you are too, that you can journey with me this morning. But doctors have a protocol or steps to follow before they give out prescriptions. So this morning, can I ask you all, you're not doctors, I'm not a doctor either, but can you scrub up this morning and pretend to be like a doctor with me and analyse this patient, this passage who knows we are very good at being Dr. Google. Does anyone have anyone heard that, that before? And I'm going to self-diagnose what I've got. And then we tell everyone around us, oh, I, I definitely got pneumonia. I'm so sure it's definitely pneumonia and it's, and it, and it's, it's getting really bad. Or, yep, no, it's definitely, oh, yep, um, it's got something else going on. Um, definitely going to have to get this medication. But we aren't the doctors and we don't know what's going on. But can I tell you that we serve a God who is our healer. He's all-knowing. And this morning you and I get to look at how he does his healing. I said this this morning, I'm not a doctor, but today let's all put on the mind of a doctor and let's work this miracle together. Point number one this morning is this, the observation. Everyone say the observation. The observation. A lot of you know this process. You go to the doctors and you sit in the room and what is the first thing they begin to do? Ask you questions. They don't come, they don't say come into the room and then they just start working their writing, uh, they don't start examining you. The first thing they do is they observe. And if you have a medical background here today, please, I'm not talking as a professional, I'm just talking from my experience myself of what happens. So number one, observation. The first thing that when you head to a doctor, they do, is they just visually observe your body your language, the way you talk, your interactions. And what are the next thing they do? They begin to ask you questions. They say, good morning, Mrs. D-Mail. How can I help you today? And they begin to ask you questions. They ask you things like, is there any family history of this happening? How have you been feeling? 
What, have, what medications have you been taking yourself, your self-prescribed medications? How long has this been going on? And a lot of other very personal questions which I shouldn't go into this morning and I don't want to go there this morning. But for you and I, we can see that there is an observation process. So let's all put our observation caps on as doctors this morning and revisit.